Welcome to the second SE Cockpit keyword research tutorial and in this video we'll take a look at the competition evaluation in SE Cockpit and that is represented first of all by these orange bars here. So to just give a quick idea of this what you have here is the the potential visitors and the competition strength for ranks 1 to 3, 4 to 7 and 8 to 10. What this means is if you get a page ranked in position number one for how to knit you will potentially get up to 600 actual visitors coming to your site okay actual people that will click on that result that's an estimation gained from the exact match um, search volume and from data where we can estimate how many people will click on search result number one how many of them will click on search result number two and so on downwards so we know that uh, for a keyword like how to knit if you just break into the first page, get one of the lower rankings, you likely already get a dozen or so visitors a day from that. In the, in the middle of the page, of the search results page, you'll get over a hundred visitors a day already. And at the top of the front page, you will get up to 600 visitors a day. And these are, of course, estimations, but they are, um, from the data we have of our own sites ranking, they're pretty exact. These uh, numbers are pretty exact. Um, you know, again, only estimations, uh, but certainly more exact than anything else that I've ever seen produced by a keyword research tool. And then we have the competition strength. Now here we have an orange bar, and you know the simplest uh, way of looking at it is simply that the more orange you see, the harder it is going to be to rank for a particular keyword. And this is also split up into these three different, you know, like the top of the page, the middle of the page, and the bottom ranking results. And as you can see, these uh, competition amounts don't always make sense. So if you look at knitting machine, you can see that theoretically it should be much easier to get into the middle of the page than to get to the bottom of the page, which doesn't make sense, right? It should always be easier to rank low than it is to rank high. Now the reason for these differences, there are two main reasons for that. First of all, while we have a quite a sophisticated way of calculating competition strength and of, of estimating how Google ranks pages, it's not perfect. Okay, If it were, if we had the perfect simulation of how Google ranks pages, then you know we'd basically have the key to unlimited riches if we could 100% backwards engineer what Google does. Unfortunately, we can't. And so the competition strength analysis is not always 100% exact. And that's why this can sometimes happen that the top ranking positions are um, shown as being less competitive than the lower ranking positions. Another important factor is that Google treats certain types of pages like videos or news entries very differently from standard web pages. So sometimes, for example, a, um, a video with almost no backlinks can outrank a page with hundreds or even thousands of backlinks. And this can distort the competition value. And if you have, if you had just one single value for the competition, then things like videos in the results would distort that value. Uh, by splitting it up, we can counteract that to a certain degree. Now for any keyword, you can always also take a closer look at the competition data. So for example, knitting for beginners looks like a pretty promising keyword. So I'm going to double click on this. It opens up a new tab with this competition data. Down here, you see the search trend for this keyword. See over time how often it's being searched. And here you see the top 10 ranked pages. First of all, we have the page titles right here. So you can see um, this is, of course, the page title is a very important ranking factor, so you can see how many of these pages have a page title optimized for the keyword. Then you see the actual URL, and here, for example, you can see that there are two videos listed in the search results. Now, and this is one of these examples. As you can see um, here, for example, there are a few pages with massive amounts of links that are being outranked by these videos. Now, one of these videos has a few backlinks to it, and it has a high page authority. And I'm going to go into a bit, de a bit more detail what that means as well. The other video is basically just there because this video is there as well, and um, Google usually lists two videos next to each other. This video is 
um, you know, has zero backlinks, zero mods rank, zero authority, has nothing going on. It's simply trading along with this other video here, but it's outranking a page down here that has thousands of backlinks. The reason this here, this page here is ranking so um, so far down is that it's not optimized for the keyword, meaning in this case that it's not on page optimized for the keyword knitting for beginners. And that's just an example of how the data can sometimes be a bit quirky and you, you only see what's going on if you take a closer look. Um, then here's the URL as I, as I said and you can click on any of these links to visit that website. Then we have MozRank and MozRank is a simulation of Google PageRank uh, done by the guys at SEO Moz, and it's it's a very good simulation of Google PageRank. In fact, it's more precise, and what it does is it updates more often. It updates much, much more often than Google PageRank because Google PageRank only updates like uh, three to four times a year, and MozRank updates much more frequently. And MozRank is really a representation of backlinks. Okay, the entire amount of backlinks going into a site that is the main factor that plays into um, MozRank. And that's not only the amount of backlinks, but also the quality of backlinks. So like uh, you can think of it as the accumulation of the total amount of link juice going to a page. That's gonna be the MozRank. That is the main factor for MozRank. Now next to that, we also have page authority and domain authority values. And these are also based on uh, SEO Moz's highly complex um, and and quite frankly amazing simulations and emulations of what Google does to rank pages. And you can think of it like this, while MozRank looks at one of the ranking signals, which is backlinks and backlink strength, uh, authority values look at as many uh, Google ranking signals as the guys at SEO Moz know about. So you can think of it as uh, authority values have to do with the amount of backlinks with the strength of those backlinks. It also has to do with um, the crawlability of the page, the on-page factors, uh, domain age, and stuff like that. Okay, so many, many different signals play into that. And basically, the higher the page authority, uh, the more likely a page is to rank highly. Except that what also plays into it is domain authority. And domain authority, that is, you know, exactly what it sounds like, really. You know, we always talk about authority sites. So if you have an authority site, that would be a established, old, large website with lots of content, lots of backlinks, it's been around forever. Um, something like Amazon, obviously, has domain authority of 95. That is, by the way, a scale from 0 to 100. So this is an extremely high authority. Uh, something like YouTube has 98% domain or 98 um, points in domain authority, hugely authoritative domain. And of course, if you have a page with lower authority, like this one here, that is placed on a domain with extremely high authority, it can sometimes outrank um, other pages with far more backlinks to them, for example. And then finally, we have uh, links, that is juice links and total links. And these links are pulled from, again, from SEO Moz, from their own um, database, from their own index of the web. Um, and the total links are the total amount of backlinks they find to a page. And the juice links are the amount of links to that page that are do follow links and that have, you know, that according to SEO Moz's calculations will pass page rank that will matter, in other words, the amount of links that will matter for the rankings. So in this case, if we have 23 total links and 17 juice links, that means there are six backlinks to this page that don't actually affect the rankings. So that those could be no follow links or something like that. Now, in, in slightly more practical terms, how do we interpret this data? For this particular keyword, it's a great example because what we can see is that, first of all, if we look at the authority values. We do have some highly authoritative, authoritative domains here, um, but the pages themselves, and remember that Google ranks pages, not domains, uh, the pages themselves are not that highly authoritative. I mean, some of them are, some of them aren't, right? But it's not crazy. If this were, if all of these were like 60 and above, we would be in trouble. It would be difficult to rank for this. But as you can see, there's a 29, here's a one here. Uh, one here, so it's not too too tough. 
And what we can also see is that we have a page that has a title that is well optimized for the target keyword knitting for beginners. And we're going to assume that the whole page is also well optimized for this keyword. And this with just a handful of backlinks is outranking far more authoritative pages that aren't as well optimized. Okay, that the on-page SEO plus a few good backlinks helps this page rank in place number one. So you could come in and do the same uh, for, for sure. You could uh, build a nice website, put some content on there and make one page that is highly optimized for the keyword knitting for beginners and build a good amount of links to that and you could probably muscle your way past all of these authoritative domains and you know rank somewhere up here with this um, with this one number one ranking site here that isn't actually all that authoritative and doesn't have that much going for it in terms of backlinks. All right, that's the overview over the competition data in SE Cockpit. In the next video, we'll have a look at how to interpret some of the other data that's uh, produced by this tool.